Hey, what's up, YouTube? Welcome back to another video. Hey, we got our first playoff win in eight years, and boy, was it a tough one! I cannot overstate the significance of this win, right? Where we overcame a second straight slow start to the ball game and double digit deficits, right? Okay, let's get straight into it, right? In my previous video, I talked about the defensive scheme that we were doing, all right, with the Hawks. Okay, let's start with defense first. Let's start with all the defensive adjustments that uh, Coach Tips did today. Okay, right? First things first, okay, was uh, much more aggressive pressure when Young was handling the ball, especially when he brought the ball, especially when he brought the ball uh, up from the backcourt, right? Like, right from the beginning, right on off the tip off, Peyton was right on to him, right? So, this is a significant change, right? Especially for somebody like Young, who's like a smaller player, okay? Having a bigger, stronger guy, being aggressive, right from the beginning, right, right, right from where he catches the ball, right, he's gonna put him under more pressure, maybe tire him out, all right, it's a good adjustment, which I thought we actually could have did it from the last game, but anyways, okay, the second one is how we actually guarded Young when he was coming off a pick and roll, okay, like, let's, let's take a look right here, Okay, so we see the ball is being reversed, and then we see Young come off a ball screen from Capella, right? So you see what Nerlens did here. Instead of just dropping and wait for the ball handler, which is Young in this uh, situation, to turn the corner, all right, and then be stuck in no man's land like we were, like what we did last the ball game. Okay, this time we sort of it's sort of like a soft trap, all right? We jumped out early and then forced him to go away from the hoop. And this time, we were able to get a deflection, the ball went out of bounds. So this was a recurring theme throughout the game, right? Okay, we didn't do it every time, right? We sort of mix, mix, mixed up a little bit of uh, different um, approaches to the ball screen this game, which I, I think helped a lot. Okay, he was sometimes young, wasn't sure what was coming. So it took him a little while to like assess the situation. Okay, right, as compared to the last game where we only, most of the time, we only did drop coverage and he was just able to walk into the paint, all right, and get off his floaters or look for lobs, okay. So here's, right, like I talked about having different uh, approaches to the ball screen, right. So in this instance, right, Rose was guarding him, right, so this time, look at what he does. He jumps out on the screener. He rejects the ball screen, right? He rejects the ball screen and makes Young go to his left. Okay, all right. So he sort of surveys the floor. So he decides to get the ball back and go one on one against Randall here. But uh, Julius does a very good job staying close and contesting without fouling, right? So that was the second one. So we did sort of like a soft trap and then we denied the screener and then this was late, pretty late in the ball game, right? Okay. And look at what happens here, right? Yang looks like he's calling for a ball screen from Capella, but look at what look at what Taj is doing. Look at what Taj is doing right here. He is actually denying the screener. Right? He doesn't let him go set the screen. All right, which is another one of the approaches that we use in this game. We used it, I think, a couple of times, maybe one or two, two or three times, towards the end of the game. All right, and you could clearly see Yang wasn't really sure what to do next. All right, so in this case, he tried to pass the ball back to Capella, and then they coughed up a shot right here. Right, so. 
good defensive sequence from our side. So I guess going forward, all right, what we need to do is to probably mix up a lot of the different coverages so that he doesn't get used to what he's seeing, all right, and then make it tough for him to read what's going to happen next. All right, I thought that was a great adjustment. Okay. Okay, let's talk about offense now. Okay, well, obviously, you guys seen the headlines, right? D Rose carried us for pretty much the first half entirely, right? Without his offensive output, it probably would have been a blowout. Okay, Julius was not his usual self, and he tried to force a lot of the, a lot of the action. Okay, going one on one, sometimes holding on to the ball too long. Right, and he relied too much on his jumpers. Okay, there were there were a few times Gal Galinari was on him, and he actually chose to take the fadeaway jump shot or the side step or the step back. Okay, I thought he should have been more aggressive and try to attack the basket. Right, like we see here in this clip here, he actually had some success posting up from the high post. All right, like we see here, Rose gets him the ball. See, from this position, he's able to get into the paint with like one or two dribbles and possibly finish on a layup or even even better, draw a foul. Sometimes when a player is not... His shots are not falling, the probably the best way would be to try and get to the foul line, make a few free throws, you know, get yourself warm, see the ball go through the net, all right? It would help you... It will help you kind of warm up in a way, I guess. So in this case, he drove and he was foul, right? He went to the foul line. Made one of two, I think. Okay. Right. So another another thing, it seemed like a slight offensive adjustment that Coach Tibbs did in the second half. Uh, he had Randall, uh, Julius, and D. Rose play some two-man game, all right? And like in this case, right, it was a pick and pop, he was able to get the ball, and he made the three, right? I thought that was, there was a, there was effort to try and get Julius coming off some, certain types of action so that he would actually catch the ball and then there will be kind of a defender running towards him and then he could like make a play, drive, or perhaps do something instead of just having him catch the ball out on the perimeter and turn and face and then when whenever he did that and he tried to drove, drive into the lane he would always be facing like two or three defenders waiting for him that was the that's the hawks game plan right but if you have an action like maybe a simple screen and roll or pistol action where he gets the ball and it's kind of on the move it'll be easier to attack the defense right which we will see in the next clip right which is um, they run pistol, so he, so Randall sets the initial ball screen here, all right, for a block, okay, and then he comes off, he pops to the three-point line, and then he drives into the paint. It's a great kick out to D Rose, all right, who hit the three, okay. So that. That's the offensive adjustment, all right? And of course, how can I forget? The whole Madison Square Garden was rocking, right? And it was probably a big reason why our guys were able to maintain the high level of intensity and hustle to get stops towards the later part of the third and the fourth quarter, all right? And to eventually close out the game, all right? We needed every push we could get, all right? The energy from the crowd. It was amazing, all right? Everybody chipped in, RJ, Reggie Bullock, Bugs, OB, Quick, Taj, and even Nerlens, who was kind of uh, hampered by his injury. He picked up in the previous game. He only played like maybe 15 minutes, I guess, all right? So, hey, there you have it, all right? It was a great win, first playoff win in eight years. Alright, I'll see you guys in the next game, okay? Alright, 
and of course if you like what you're seeing like the video subscribe all right and i'll see you next time go next